When the Christmas tree was still a new custom, people developed creative ways to decorate the tree with as much light as possible. Of course, actual lights are used from candles to light bulbs. From the popularity of Christmas trees in the mid-1800s to World War II, glass ornaments were an invention and cottage industry was still in Europe. Recently, exclusive designers have created a demand for extremely imaginative and colorful decorations. Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from my channel, How's It Made? Before jumping to the video, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. History of Glass Christmas Ornaments For thousands of years, garlands and garlands made of vanilla and evergreen trees have been part of the celebration. In particular, the winter festival features fragrant evergreen trees that symbolize eternal life. Early Christians borrowed the symbolism of holly, mistletoe, boxwood, rosemary, laurel, and Christmas tree from the Hebrews, Greeks, Romans, and Druids. In Europe, live trees are planted in pots and brought indoors to inspire residents. As early as 1521, there were records of indoor and undecorated Christmas trees in Europe. By about 1755, Christmas trees became widespread in Europe, and around this time, they were customarily decorated with candies, fruits, gilded nuts, dolls, and other ornaments toys and Christian symbols including the image of the Son of Christ. In 1841, Prince Albert, the spouse of Queen Victoria, introduced the custom of Christmas trees from his hometown of Germany. Christmas markets in European towns and villages sell gold leaf for bronzing fruits and nuts, dried fruits such as figs and plums, glass beads, paper towels, various small toys from hobby horses to drums and soldiers, as well as small cakes and sparkling ones. Marzipan is specially used to decorate Christmas trees. We also made miniature candles for trees and made metal clips to fix the candles on the branches and collect hot wax drops. The annual Christmas market shows that the demand for tree decorations is growing, and families seek heirlooms that can be passed on to future generations. In the Victorian era, in Europe and the United States, Christmas lights made of glass began to replace dangerous candles. These lamps are small lamps made of colored glass sheets with a circle of metal wires hanging on them. Each lamp is equipped with a wick and oil floating on the water. Some lamps are hand-blown glass, while others are made of pattern glass because they reflect gleaming light. Between 1850 and 1860, glass decorations replaced the main edible decorations on trees. Cottage industry flourishes in the Thuringian Mountains in central Germany, where peasant families make hand-blown glass decorations. Precisely in a conventional glass-making house, a father and an adult fellow blow a glass tube heated on a Bunsen burner into a decorative shape. Other family members apply silver nitrate solution to the interior of the decorations so that they reflect light. Rows of nailed wooden boards hung from the ceiling of the cabin, and coated decorations were poured on the nails and dried overnight. Then immerse each decoration in brightly colored paint and decorate it with paint or delicate accessories. Cut the glass stem and attach a metal hanger. Spherical and oval shapes dominate, of course, but many peculiar shapes have been designed by making glass blown plaster or metal molds. Hunting horns, pipes, Delicate bells, delicate faces, and tailed birds made of spun glass are specially priced. The color of these early decorations mimic the color of the colored sugar used to decorate the candies of previous generations of trees. Entrepreneurs such as Frank W. Woolworth and shopkeepers who reach out-of-store customers through catalogs have helped spread the glory of glass jewelry in the United States. Until 1925, Germany was the exclusive producer of glass jewelry. German jewelry first came to the United States as a precious part of the immigrant heritage. Later, these accessories were imported. In 1925, Japan was the next country to produce a large number of decorations. The cottage industry is also suitable for Japanese households. Czechoslovakia and Poland, two countries with deep glass manufacturing traditions, entered the market in the late 1920s. By 1935, the United States had imported more than 250 million pieces of handmade jewelry, but it still didn't have its industry. In 1939, Europe began World War II, shutting down the supply of glass decorations and many other European imports. Corning Glass Factory in New York enters the decoration business. Corning specializes in production of light bulbs. It uses a belt machine to flow molten gas through countless molds. This machine was developed in 1926. By adapting to the glass shape required for decorations, Corning can produce more than 2,000 decorative balls per minute. Corning's looms can produce approximately 100 million decorations per year. Manufacturing Process of Glass Christmas Ornaments Mass Production Jewelry To be precise, in the factory, large amounts of glass are melted and flow through a series of molds and ribbons. 
When each mold moves to a position in front of the glass flow, compressed air is blown into the mold to force the glass to uniformly form the shape of the mold. As a result, using clear glass, the size ranges approximately 1.75 to 5 inches in diameter. Next, the decorations are moved to the site via conveyor belt, where they are coated with silver planing solution on the inside to provide mirror-like reflective properties, which are shown through the outer coating and later applied to the outside by dipping them in a water primer or primer. After the primer has dried, the balls are transported by conveyor belt to the paint station, where they are immersed in the paint. Red and blue are the usual basic colors. Speaking about the designs, they can be added by machine or by hand and may add painted design, frosted, sparkle, or glue decorations. Besides, glass manufacturers can also produce spun glass or glass fiber to decorate ornaments. Simple decorations are also made for those who like to decorate their decorations at home. Meanwhile, the metal hooks and hooks are prefabricated according to the standard size of the top of the ornament, and the ornament is fixed with a machine after decoration. They're made of light metal such as aluminum or tin, so they're not too heavy for the ornament. Lastly, the completed bulbs are then transferred to the packaging plant. Making of Handmade Jewelry Modern glass blowers began to produce handmade decorations using glass tubes made by suppliers. The craftsmen can melt or cut the tube into the required amount of glass for a particular ornament. By rotating the tube on the gas power torch, a portion of the glass is softened and maintained at a relatively uniform temperature. When the glass is ready to be shaped, the operator steps on the foot pedal that opens the mold. The mold can be made of plaster, cast iron, graphite, or porcelain. They can have regular or highly detailed shapes etched into the mold by a laser beam. Next, the fine glass is embedded into the mold, and the blower blows the glass tube to extend the glass to fit the mold. The glass worker has three seconds to complete this process because once the glass touches the mold, it will cool in shape. The finished product has all the details of the mold and is called a hard casting. It also has a pipe called a rod attached to the top, like a rigid puppet on a wooden stick. Mass producers of jewelry claim that hand-blown jewelry has an inherent disadvantage. That is, the thickness of the glass may be uneven and easy to break. The highly skilled German artists combine glass and blowing skills so perfectly that handmade decorations may be more durable. In the next step, the silver plating solution is injected into the stem and rotated to cover the interior of the decoration. The silver plating solution can be omitted to produce a translucent decoration that only uses the outer paint color and has low reflective quality. Dip the silver plated hard casting into the white primer and let it dry. Designer jewelry use a palette of colors and details to achieve its uniqueness. The paint used for decorations dries slowly and tends to flow together. Therefore, decorations must be painted in a skipped scotch manner without touching adjacent areas before the painted area dries. Then, the artist later draws alternate areas. Decorations include glitter and bellow, a glittering substance similar to fine sugar crystals which is applied after the paint dries. Then use an ordinary glass cutter to cut the stem from the ornament and attach the metal cap or lock to the remaining short post. Add labels and special packaging before shipping to identify and protect individual decorations. That's it guys! Let us know if you found this video informative in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed watching the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next one!